What's the plan for today, Matt? Uh, just doing a bit of pads with the Asman. Uh, going to do some jiu-jitsu after this, and then watch some SNC on the car today, bit of set work, and then some uh, 20 on 40 off condition, and probably the session I uh, don't look forward to, but the least. What was your reaction when your when your fight was first? Oh, mate, I was sitting in the garden in my mum's, just cooking some like chicken and veg or something, and I just got this WhatsApp saying very sad news, Dean. You won't be fighting this weekend. I had to read the message about ten times to like process it. Then I started thinking it's got to be some sort of joke. Yeah, mate, it was horrible. But uh, because of the weather as well. It was because of the weather, but I think the worst bit for me was the weather was fine on Saturday. We predicted 40% chance of rain. My friends and family still went over there to Bezier, and there was all videos of it being glorious out there. So that was the most annoying part of the whole thing. Was that that? They put their flights over there to, wa to they watch all, you? Yeah, they'd all gone over to, to watch me. They had flight hotels. Why? Why? Why cancel a holiday for them? So they went. Lovely place, they said. But the weather was perfect for a fight. So. That was that was the most disappointing thing. Obviously, the weather was really bad. It would have been out of people's control, but so yeah, so someone someone fucked up somewhere. Did you uh, did you know straight away that it would be rearranged for four weeks' time, or was it sort of left in the air? No, it was bit? left about two three days for them to re-announce it. But to be honest, it took me a, it took me a week to be able to commit to the event again, just because I was I'm obviously I'm nervous about the risks associated with the the same event being in the same venue so it's still a concern now but I'm trying to keep it to the back of my mind and stay motivated I, but by committing you mean like, like mentally like mentally committing to yeah. it yeah like obviously you've, you've seen the size of the operation we're running here there's a lot going on and for me to be prioritised in a fight camp means I have to pull away from the other roles so to do it for 12 weeks see no fight no financial reward and then to do to know I'm doing it all again, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough, yeah. So yeah, obviously for your fight camp everything's like planned out. Yeah. You know, I imagine like quite meticulously. What does that what does that do to that type of like little throwing back? It's 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 one of them things like everyone's like, oh well at least you're ready to fight, but you're not, are you? Because when we look at athlete performance in MMA, you're only performing a few times a year. The yeah. football is performing every Saturday during the season. It's all about creating a, a peak performance level. You can't do that week in, week out in our, in our industry, our, our field. So for me, it was tough to get to such a state where I felt confident I could fight for five fives. So I had to cut, take me, me foot off the gas for two, three weeks yeah. and let my body you know, recover from all the inflammation and everything else so I had a couple of weeks where I reduced the intensity of training but increased the volume and then last week this week more so this week I've really like picked up the intensity again so feeling good feeling good I've been in this gym since I don't know 22 and a half I think I started with Phil our head coach when I was like 14 15 and I met Dean the same in our old gym LVC and then I've pretty much been here since I was 16 fully so about six years I've been training under Dean but I've knew him for about eight. You know what? He's great. To be fair, like he's, him and Phil have done a lot of lot of stuff for the, the, the lads at this gym. Like we've had the college course for years. He's been running that alongside his fighting and his training. And as well, I fight myself, so he's a great training partner for me. We're both around the same weight, so yeah, he, he's good. He, he's a coach and he's a training partner. Cause we're the same weight. He, he is mainly my coach, but we we get rounds and we both push each other when I when I'm training. So. Um, I think he does bring a bit of a unique thing because if you're just coaching and you're not on the match with you, you, whoever you're teaching, like your clients, you, you don't know the ins and outs. But if he's rolling with me day in day out, he can help major with that. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, I'd say that is the unique thing. There's a lot of coaches don't train with their athletes, which is important. You know what I mean? So you know where to bounce from, and then you can even help each other. Even though he's a coach, he can take things off. Everyone else, you, you're open to learning off everyone, you know what I mean? At, at the minute, mate, we're, we're kind of restricted to upstairs. This used to be an SNC area, but we've moved all the mats upstairs. Um, we're currently renovating downstairs, and we've also acquired the next door building, so we've knocked through next door. Um, I'll give you a little tour around if you want. So we have people travel from everywhere uh, to, to train with us, so any given morning, there'll be people in from Wales, Bradford, Manchester, Lancashire. Cheshire, just all over the northwest area, really, even a little bit further afield at times. So 
It's nice that people drive past N20 gyms to get here some days, so it means a lot to us, mate. So this was always the, the sort of section of the gym that was ours anyway. Where you see the stylus bedrooms, just a bit further down. That's a space that we've now acquired. There's no lecky in here, so it's dark, but we'll, we'll have a quick look. Yeah, originally there was like a, a partition wall and a staircase. All that's come out now, so this is just going to be all matted. A cage where we're standing, half octagons in there and stuff. Um, and then we're going to do more educational space upstairs. We've already got a classroom, but we're going to put like striking stuff in there as well. Um, and then we're just going to expand our, our operations. We've opened on the Whittle as well this year. Um, and eventually we want to get an alternative provision open as well, which is for like expelled kids who are 14 to 16. Just as like a, a pathway onto our BTech post 16 program and just really to keep doing the good work we're doing with the with the youth. I think that's probably one of the, the strongest parts of our ethos is, is how good the youth development program is here. Um, mm. And I don't just mean in terms of the MMA, I mean the, the all round package of bringing kids on and bringing them into the industry with a, with a proper career behind them. So. Yeah, mate, I'm proud of it. The education programme, it's like a, it's a two-year extended diploma in a BTEC, so it's a, it's a generic sports coaching qualification, and the students can come from their own gym and study with us and do a placement at their own club, or some of them are just obviously based at ours. Um, but they can go into university to do like sport coaching, sport development, sport business, sport journalism, sport media, anything like that. They would have like a really good foundation going on to the degree. The, the students who've gone to uni from the programme have really excelled because they've had real good industry knowledge, already got some you know, coaching qualifications, already working in the field, got a network behind them. So it's been hugely successful for us and um, you know, you've seen yourself all the different stuff going on with the kids in here this morning and how many of the, the lads who are delivering the sessions are we, we've basically built our own sports leaders within the community that the qualified, they've got health and safety, DBSs. It's good and we're going to build them up to be teaching assistants and maybe bring in some more kids who are maybe even harder to reach and more challenging and start even incorporating, you know, yeah. 14 to 16. So, yeah, we've got lots of lots of big plans for the future. Um, yeah. I'm excited. So give, giving lots of people opportunities. Like lots of opportunity coming through here. We, we've, we've got a really strong amateur team. I, I don't think, you know, many people would disagree that Aspire's got a really strong amateur team, but I'm open over the next few years that you know, naturally manifest into a really well established pro team as well. So I have no you know, I've no doubts we're gonna we're gonna do it. Uh, you look at some of the kids coming through at the minute like Regan Bellamy's upstairs, Shay Williams, they're two who probably stick out like a sort of out of here, but there's lots of really talented youngsters coming through and the fact we can give them a pathway, a full time pathway in, in the in the sport, it's nice for us. Yeah. So. Six reps, yeah? How long have you uh, been doing SNC with Dean for? Uh, so, I've been doing SNC with Dino now, well, probably about two, three years now. Um, as Dino said before, when we first come, we were just doing loads of like, um, just volunteering, basically just showing what, what, what we want to do with the gym, doing a bit of work experience when we were in uni. And then um, the person who was in charge at the time, he left and he said, if you want to take charge then it's yours and ever since then we've just been growing it into what it is now i've been working personally now with dino for, on one-to-one -one basis for about over a year now and um, we've done loads of one-to-one -one work together um find it easier for him as well getting away from the gym you know like getting our own time slot where we can just focus on him not too much noise going on because the gym can get very chocker very hectic so today we'll be focusing on strength um Obviously, it's the foundation for us. Everything you do build on strength, all your power, all your speed, it all builds off your strength. So, we're going to focus on today our main compound lifts. We're going to start the off of his squat, um, lower body lifts, anterior and posterior chain, um, and then we're going to do some upper body lifts again, anterior and posterior chain, being back and front. Um, but yeah, main compound lifts is always the main way forward for us to get overall full body strength. Things like a squat where you're using multiple muscle groups, lower body. Also using your core to keep the, 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 the weight stabilised. That's our bang for our buck, bro. Taking it right back to the start, mate. How did, how did you get started in MMA? Um, I was watching it when I was about 12 on Bravo. Chocolate Del fighting uh, Randy Couture. 
And that was when I was a kid. I was boxing at the time, and I followed it for years. And then one day I just looked online and was shocked that you could do it at multiple places in Liverpool. Um, and then I started Jiu Jitsu mainly, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and kind of just never looked back. I knew on my first day I wanted to be a fighter, though, and on my, my second day I knew I wanted to be a coach. So it was one of them. As soon as I seen it, I was like, this is, this is me. Me career path, definitely. Yeah. So you're already boxing by that point? I was uh, boxing as a young kid, yeah, as like an amateur, like from about eight years old till I was about twelve I was involved with boxing. Um and it was kinda of when I started watching him and I fell out of love with boxing in a weird way. Um What got what got you started boxing? What's that? What got you started boxing? Just being a kid on a rough council estate in Liverpool, that was that was there was boxing gyms about everywhere. Right, there still is today, but it was cheap, it was accessible, weren't it? But MMA's catching catching up in that sense now there's MMA clubs everywhere so So when you were that young did you have like any sense of the difference between like boxing and 100% yeah I just used to be fascinated by the grappling and the submissions watching MMA but obviously didn't really understand the concept of it and didn't think I could train it in the UK but I think I could have it even then uh, but it wasn't until I was 19 that I finally saw up MMA yeah so you were talking about like expanding the gym and stuff earlier but at, w- at what point did Aspire begin? Uh, the idea for Aspire was was um, it was originally something I was going to do in Australia. I'm an Australian citizen as well, so my me, 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 me goal was to fight and then retire and go over there and do it there. But things changed and I ended up just doing it here in Liverpool um, with uh, Phil Turner and Darren Robinson, Danny Roberts, and we just uh, yeah. I remember coming up with the name for Aspire. We were like it was on the tip of my tongue. And I was like, we, me, Danny and Adam were talking about it, and I was like, there's that word, everyone shares it, common, common, and Danny just went to spy, and I was like, that's it, mutual aspirations, everyone at the gym is aspiring to be better or, you know, improve in some way. And I was out of the gym, the gym formed, yeah. What do you make of Lucas going into the fight? Uh, I think he's all right. He's he's obviously experienced, like I am. He's got like twelve pro fights. He's a black belt. He's fought, you know, for world titles before in South American shows. But I'll be honest, I only really rate two of his fights in terms of the, op- the opposition. And he's got a good win and someone who's around the level where I've beaten him both in the first round. So I actually think he's a kill or be kill type of fighter. Um, there's no way he beats me by decision. I think if it goes five rounds, it'll be me. Um, what makes you think that? I just look at the way he fights. He's, he, he's throwing the kitchen sink at people as soon as the, the, the bell goes. And I think that, to me, is like a lack of maturity in his performances. Um, so I think his only hope, in my opinion, is catching a real slippery sub from a transition. You know what I mean? Like he fell off someone's back and caused a bulldog choke. You know, something like that um, would be the only thing that I see him ever getting a sniff of. Other, other than that, I think I'm just better than him everywhere. Uh, better than him in Jiu-Jitsu, better than him in wrestling, kickboxing, whatever. So I think he's going to just be a, ste- a pace off what am I? He's yeah. going to be a step behind me. Um, if he comes out all guns blazing, then like the last guy did, it could, it could be an early night for him. Do you know what I mean? And if he, if he takes his time, then that suits me as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm very confident about the fight. Talking about your last fight, first round finish, 20 yeah. seconds. Were you not, obviously we're not going to be disappointed with a first round finish, but were you sad you didn't get to show more of your skills? Yeah, obviously having time out the cage, I'm not one who like, I'm not someone who's a big believer in ring rust. I think your level's your level, do you know what I mean? And as long as you've been training properly with the right guys, then you shouldn't have any ring rust. But for me, it was more a case of, 
there's certain things I believe that I've that I've levelled up on whilst I've been away from fighting. The four years of being away, I've developed a new little technical aspects of the game, but tactically, psychologically, understanding how to manage a fight, I feel like I've acquired all this information through coaching in the last four years, and I, I need I need, a, I need a guy who can take me past the first twenty seconds for me to be able to see if I've got that in the way I believe I have. So I'm hoping it's not over as quick as the last one. Although I do want to finish the guy. Uh, a little bit of cage time would be nice and just set me up for the next fight a bit better because I'm sure the next one's going to be a much tougher test. What what can people expect when you get in the cage? Uh, well, I think definitely it's going to be an exciting fight. I think Lucas is a guy who, like I said, he comes to finish, so he, he's not in any boring fights, this guy. And I don't think I am. Three, three of me, four fights on ACB. I got fight of the night bonuses. Both my cage warriors fights, I got bonuses. Uh, I'm not typically in boring fights, you know what I mean? Um, so I think we both bring different aspects to us, but, but I think together it'll combine and make it quite an interesting fight. He's going to be looking for the finish, and I am going to be looking to put him away, just not going to rush it. So I want to show some of my striking skills. I want to I want to show that I can pick this guy up and suplex him, slam him on his head, slam out of submissions, and I want to show some of my new, my new submissions as well. So, uh, yeah, I've got a lot that I want to show in this fight, but... Like I said, um, I'm just going to be in the present moment. I'm not going to force nothing. I think he's going to be the guy doing that. So I'll be calm and composed, let's put it that way. In your career, in both coaching and fighting, what is it you want to achieve in the long term? Um, when I first started fighting, be, being in the UFC was like the defining thing to my career. That was probably how I used to measure my success. But I'd say it's changed a lot since. Um, now it's just about like having people's respect in the game. I want to be seen as someone who's, who's got integrity, someone who's, you know, just a good all-round person, really. If I fight in the UFC, great. If I don't, that's not going to define me anymore. I just want to, like, I think legacy's a bit of a cliche, but I just want to leave my mark on the sport, certainly locally and nationally. I'd love to I'd love to achieve some things and, and, and do things in the sport that, you know, people talk about when, when maybe I'm gone or maybe when I'm an old man. So... Yeah, just have an impact and I've got plenty of time to do that left in me fight. I think I've got three, four years fighting and in terms of the coaching, the, the world's our oyster when you see the, the team we've got and the facilities we're creating. So I'm excited. 